Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, <clears throat> thank you for all to be here this morning. Um, I'm Dr. Pablo Diaz. I'm from Mexico. And thank you uh, to Global Fertility Academy to invite me to this topic, beautiful and interesting topic. And thank you to, Merce, to for Mercerono to uh, support this kind of meeting. I have two issues to tell you before I'm going to start this meeting. First of all, English is not my first language. So if I have some troubles speaking, um, I apologize. And the second one, I'm not a biologist. I'm a clinician. So I'm going to give you a biologist topic. So where are the, the, the biologists? Raise their hands. No? OK. If you're here, I know that you're here because in the, in the, in the and the question, and the first question, the 5% five, 5 or something like that. So if you are here and I did something wrong, please don't say nothing. OK. But if you want to discuss after that, uh, I, I'd be glad to, to hear you. All right. OK. I have six beautiful papers to explain you a little bit. And I think they are very interesting, one of them, or both of them, or all of them. And so I'm going to start because we have uh, a limited time for that. All right. I'm going to talk about the morphogenetic uh, validation of EVA. EVA is a, a, a tool, a, um, <clears throat> a correlation. Uh, we're going to have the correlation between categories and blastocyte uh, formation. Uh, we're going to talk about this, the same uh, paper, but talking about the correlation with the implantation rate. After that, we're going to switch to embryo anocyte maturation with uh, two uh, beautiful uh, papers. Some one of talking about the clinical outcome following ICSI according to the stage of the nuclear maturation of the oocyte. And the other one was the qualitative and quantitative grading of human blastocytes and its association with bird life, with live bird rate and neonatal outcome. It's a very interesting paper. We're going to continue with a new strategy to diagnose embryo viability, uh, combining proteray and time-lapse technology. And I'm going to finish with the screening of oocyte quality in human IVF, proof of, of principle of follicular fluid biomarkers. OK? All of them, they are very interesting. So I'm going to start with, with the first one. I'm going to talk about the morphogenetic studies that is very important. And to know that, uh, that this paper was uh, uh, made by Natalia Basile, Basile, that is from EV uh, uh, Group. And what they do is the correlation between EVA uh, categories and blastocytes formation right. As a background, we know that EVA uh, is early embryo viability assessment use an algorithm based on the early morphogenetic markers defining as P2 uh, equals to 3T min minus T2 and P3 equal T4 minus T3. When I read this, the, this sentence in the beginning, I said, oh my god, what does that mean? OK, this is a model of um, embryo uh, um, combination of the of the, of the cleavage of the two, three, and four cells. So after that, I tried to figure it out. What does it mean? So if we look at this uh, table or this graphic, we can realize how, what, what does numbers mean about P2 is the time for the cleavage of the second cells to the third cells. And the P3 is the time to cleavage of the, four, the three to, to the four or five cells. That is, the, is this, is the embryo goes to this time, he can categorize as high probability to have a blastocyte. Is the, is the embryo goes to this one, and the medium one is the medium probability or the medium quality to have a, a, a good quality embryo or blastocyte. And if you go, if you go in the any different time, the, the embryo have a low probability to have high quality of embryos, of blastocytes. This study was made by retrospective one. They used 432 patients from February and to November of 2014. They used 2,198 embryos for site donation. 
and they use a time-lapse EVA software for the evaluation of every embryo. As we saw, they, get, they got 1,307 blastocytes, was in the 59.5% of the embryos. And they could divide all about the, 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 three, the P3, uh, P, uh, P2 uh, numbers, 250 embryos as a high level uh, uh, embryos with 80.4% as blastocytes, with 44% that good quality, and they got a low profile or low possibility, 961 embryos, 52% blastocytes, and 32.6 of good quality. As we can see in this moment, they can, they can, they, they have a, a, a statistical significant, a low, had a lower blastocyte formation rather than those defined as a high or medium blastocytes. So at this moment, with this uh, algorithm, we can divide of embryos or blastocytes in high, medium, or low possibility to get a good quality embryos. So the conclusion of this paper was that EVA tool can predict the blastocyte formation and support embryo selection. So for me, for a, as a clinician, I can say that the EVA test improves embryo selection while minimizing handling and monitoring by the embryologist. That is the, 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 uh, the advantage of this kind of technology. The second paper is the same population of the first one, but at this moment, they validate the formation and the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the implantation uh, rate with this, the, with this uh, blastocytes. As I told you, the morphogenetic algorithm is nothing new. That was uh, evaluated, it was published in 2010 by Wong and Natalia Basile uh, uh, in 2015. The aim of this paper was to determine the correlation between the three embryo early by, uh, by EVA, I'm sorry, predictive categorized as high, as medium, as low, and implantation rates. As, can, as you can see, it's the same population, retrospective, and single center from October to November 2014. They use the same embryos with oocyte donation protocols, and you use the time lapse with EVA software by they, they evaluate the 1774 embryo transfer. Why they find? They found the same uh, talking about the high, medium, and low possibility to get good uh, blastocytes embryos. But after they realized that they have a good embryos for 28%, they can find that 50% of the embryos get implanted in, the, in, the, in, in, this, in, the, uh, in this patient. Instead of in the medium categories, got the 39.8%, and in the low category, uh, this was the 30%, they just got the 33.6% of implantation rate. Talking about the day of transfer, they divide on day three and day five, and of course, they got better results when they transfer on day five, or blastocytes, with 67.7%, talking about high possibility instead of medium possibility, and uh, of course, of low possibility. So, the conclusion of this paper was that three EVA predictable categories as high, medium, and low correlate with implantation rates. So for me, as a clinician, so that I can say that the embryo selection using a non-invasive test that combines the time-lapse imaging uh, supported the use of two variables, morphokinetic model correlates with reproductive outcome. The observer relationship with implantation potential reflects the direct link between the parametric provided by an automatic system and embryo quality. So we can, we can say at this moment that EVA could be a, a very good tool for embryo selection at this moment. We're going to discuss an, an, uh, maybe another things after this talk, this, this talk. All right. I'm going to continue with another with the, with the second part of the, of, of the topic. 
about the prediction of embryonic development and clinical outcome following ICSI according to the stage of the nuclear uh, uh, maturation division. This was a challenge uh, paper because I never knew or I, I didn't knew about the, 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 the cell, the oocyte uh, maturation. So I had to talk with my embryologist in the clinical center and explain a little bit. And it was very interesting, the information that I got. When we saw this picture, we can say, oh my God, this is the perfect oocyte with one polar body, maybe the, 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 the cytoplasma, uh, everything looks perfect. But we need to evaluate this embryo. It's just not for morphology. Even we need to, to, to evaluate the uh, maturation of the, of the, of the nuclear, nuclear, for the nuclear division. So the aim of this paper was to evaluate or investigate the possibility to predict embryonic development and clinical outcome according to the stage of nuclear maturation division. It was a retrospective paper with 53 patients, 83 cycles, 211 all sites. We use a control variant high speed st stimulation protocol with antagonism and HMV. They saw the metaphyse two chromosomes with inverted microscope with using a normastic, norma, nor Marsky optics. It's not Marsky. It's an RL there, but I'm sorry. All right. So they divide these oocytes according to the, to the maturation of the nucleus. Group A, oocytes that had the M2 chromosomes arranged them in two lines. Group B, oocytes in prometaphase 2, not yet arranged in two lines. A group C, oocytes with irregularity arrangement chromosomes. They can see, the biologists can see these this, this, this chromosomes aligned near to the, to the polar body. So, results. What are the, the results about this paper? The results are that, of course, in group A, that was the 78% of the oocytes that they collect, that they retrieve, they got 44% of pregnancy rates and 11.8 rate or percent of miscarriage. You, can you see the prometaphase 2 oocytes or oocytes with irregularly arranged chromosome? They don't have pregnancy. Here was the 25% per transfer. Okay, can you see per transfer and 100% of miscarriage? So the conclusion of this paper is that we can identify chromosome stage and adjusting the pre incubator time has a high potential to predict the embryonic develop and clinical outcome. The use of sites not yet at metaphase 2, there's something that we know at this moment, can result in decreased fertilization, blastocytes, and pregnancy rates. Irregularity arranged chromosomes might be sign of nuclear degradation. For me, as a clinician, I can, I can review that in women undergoing ICSI, longer pre-incubation to five or six hours might be beneficial to allow prometaphase 2 oocytes to advance to metaphase 2 oocytes. Okay. Good inter inter interesting uh, paper. Talking about embryo and oocyte maturation, this paper, uh, talking in oral, but uh, Dr. Ebner, they, want to, they wanted to, to, to give us information about the qualitative and quantitative gradient of human blastocytes and its association with some rates like live birth rate and neonatal outcome. The background is, at this moment, blastocyte stage has become more common in IVF. Most of the clinic at this moment is working on increased the, the, the percentage of embryos to get blastocytes and transferring blastocytes. However, several backgrounds of blastocytes culture have been reported, like monozygotic twinnings, preterm delivery, congenital malformations, and increasing birth weight. So the aim of this paper was to determine whether qualitative and quantitative blastocytes assessment on day five 
predicts of neonatal outcome, like placental and birth weight, live birth, and malformation. Very ambitious paper. What they do? They use 254 blastocytes, 162 fresh, and 92 vitrified. They score according to the classical criteria, expansion, inner cell mass, and trophic to appearance. They qualify in semi-automatically in parallel. And the information of the birth and placental way and malformation was obtained by the clinic where the, where the baby was born. They can find some issues in, or, 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 or this paper. They, got, they found that the beer weight was significantly lower when the vitrify rather than fresh blastocytes were used. As we can see in this, in this table, in this graphic, we can see that the beer, that the, that the, that the vitrify worm was a little bit uh, uh, with, uh, with, with uh, bigger of, of, of weight as compared with fresh one significant uh, um, of, of, uh, um, uh, difference, I'm sorry. As I told you, English is not my first language. All right, so continue with this, with this paper, talking about the evaluation of the grades of, of, the, of the blastocyst, talking about the inner cell mass, like A or B, and with traffic to their appearance, dividing these embryos and the, class, and the characteristics of the babies, okay, they didn't find any correlation with the degree of expansion, ICM grade, ACM area, and birth or placenta weight. But they found that trophic to their quality and cell number were significantly correlated with implantation and live birth rates. As we can see, both the trophectoderm quality and trophectoderm number was, were significantly correlated with rates and implantation and live birth, as I said. The other thing that they found is the trophectoderm quality uh, was associated, uh, associated with the sex radio. So male blastocytes were 2.53 times more likely to be of quality A. This is very interesting information. But talking about the other issues, they don't find any correlation. Conclusions. Birth weight was significantly higher with vitrified warming blastocysts than with fresh, fresh blastocysts. The degree of expansion of um, an ICM grades and area did not correlate with placenta or birth weight. We need to look at the quality of the trophectoderm because that seems that would be a good, a good prognosis uh, uh, evaluation that the cell number and the quality of the trophectoderm were significantly correlated with rates of implantation and live birth. And as a second of objective, the male blastocytes, blastocytes were more likely to be a high trophectoderm quality. For clinical implications, so for me as a clinician, I need to ask for, for, the, for, the, for the biologist to take a look of the trophic to term to assessment because this can be used to predict the rates of implantation, pregnancy, and live birth, and will ultimately replace ICM scoring. We need to take, we, we, maybe we can, we are going to, 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 to pass, to, to evaluate trophectoderm even than ICM. Okay. Finally, I'm going to talk about the metabolism and biomarkers for selection of embryo and some oocytes. In this paper, we, 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 we are going to talk about a new strategy to diagnose embryo viability combining proterize and time-lapse technology. It was made by Marco Messinger. It's the same uh, uh, group of EV. So they, they, they are going to talk about time-lapse and some uh, proterize. 
Remember, time-lapse technology, as, as we were talking, can improve embryo selection. But if we add a biomarker fingerprint by protomics in culture media analysis, maybe could be better. The aim of this paper was to examine the embryo viability diagnostics tool using a combination of biochemical fingerprint and time-lapse morphokinetic analysis. This was a retrospective paper, it was a small one, with 17 OSA donors in 2014. They use, they evaluate 28 embryo transfer. 16 were implanted, 12 were not implanted. They evaluate seven proteins, were analyzed using Luminex technology. They combine, of course, the exact timing in hours of cell cycle duration, blastomer synchrony, and five blastomer cleavage. That they consider the most important step for an embryo. And they use the logistic relation analysis, and this, let's take a look what they found. The protein that they found that have more correlation with implantation rate was interleukin-6. When they find when the people with the embryos that get pregnant or implanted, 83% express interleukin-6 instead of 44% that they don't uh, 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 express it. And the other thing that they saw for the relation for the timing of the uh, cleavage of the cells, then they, when they had optimal range that was for 5 to 12 hours, they consider that was related to the implantation rate. So the presence, absence of interleukin-6 and the duration of the cells, of the cells cleavage, were the most relevant embryo features of our embryo selection. They did a hierarchical model that established four groups. As we can see here, talking about interleukin-6 and the cell cleavage for 5 to 12 hours, if we can find the interleukin-6 more plus the cell cleavage, we can have 88% of implantation rate. Instead of the, of the embryos, then they don't express interleukin-6 and they don't have the cell cleavage between 5 and 12 hours, we can have 33% of implantation rate. So we can have this hierarchical model and we can establish uh, the possibility of the embryo uh, implantation talking about these two issues. There is a small paper, but it could be a, a, a good one in the future. All right, for the conclusion of this paper, of course, embryos with the presence of interleukin-6 with 5 to 12 hour cell cycle duration has significantly higher implantation rate, as I said, 88%. For me, as a, clinic, as a clinician, transfer of high quality blastocytes has proven to increase implantation rates. But if we combine time lapse and proteomic analysis, maybe it could improve these numbers, okay? Finish my presentation, I want to give you this uh, topic because it's talking about the, the, the metabolomics uh, issues that Dr. Chen, he was a poster, talking about the screening of all sites quality in human IVF. Proof of principles of follicular fluid biomarkers. What they do? They took the follicular fluid of every single follicle. And because this is very simple, well, it's not, invas it's not invasive, it could be easy to do, but cost benefit, we're going to talk about later. They find, or they're looking for levels of peptides in follicular fluid to predict embryo quality. So, the aim of this paper was to investigate if individual human follicular fluid samples 
can become a new non-invasive predictive biomarker for oocyte quality. So they took a follicular fluid for 67 couples undergoing IVF. The samples were analyzed in three different uh, independence training groups and divided in two classes, fertilized and non-fertilized. The peptides were extracted okay, using a sample preparation, assisted sample preparation, and solid phase extraction. The most interesting thing is what they found. What did they find? Okay, as we can say, the, the, the most of the, the, the proteins that they found, the conclusion is the three groups, they were according that 23 proteins were selected as a possi possible biomarkers for good oocyte or embryo uh, production. So we have 23. We need to, to realize maybe of these 23, which one is the best one, okay? But at this moment, we have 23 proteins. So in conclusion for this paper is a set of 23 peptides could at this moment discriminate fertilized oocytes and non-fertilized oocytes. Peptidomic techniques to identify potential biomarkers for oocyte quality is feasible. So for clinical implications, the peptide profiline of individual follicular fluid samples might provide a new and non-invasive innovation approach to predict oocyte quality and fertilization in IVF practice. However, of course, further investigation is required. As a summary of the six papers that I, that I explained to you uh, today, I want to say something. Basile says that the EVA test, the EVA test improves embryo selection while minimizing handling and monitoring. This is good. Aparicio correlated these issues with the, with the implantation rate. So this, 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 this is good. This is, could be good, OK? Talking about Nagayoshi papers in women undergoing ICSI, longer pre-incubation, five to six hours, might be beneficial to allow prometaphase II oocytes to advance to metaphase II oocytes. Ebner shows the trophectoderm assessment can be used to predict rates of implantation, pregnancy, and late birth. By the other hand, Messenger combining time lapse and proteomic biomarkers, and they say that they can, we can have a better selection for embryos to uh, diminish the monitoring by the embryologist. And Chen says that peptide profiling in individual follicular fluid samples might provide a new and innovative non-invasive approach to predict oocyte quality and fertilization in IVF practice. I hope these papers can give you a little bit new things. Uh, for me, it was everything new, as I told you, because I'm not a, 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 a biologist, but it was very interesting as a clinician to know at this moment that there are very good uh, promising uh, tools that we can use to select the better oocyte or the better embryo. Thank you so much for your attention.